Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. We're back in the laser shop, finally. Got our replacement lenses and we've been back in the shop burning all day, uh, designing a piece for a customer. Uh, going to be burning an image on some of the basswood, uh, one of the larger natural planks that you can pick up at the hobby shop. The planks are about $15, $16 a piece. Uh, so when you're burning these, you want to make sure that you're producing the best image you can possibly produce. And how do you do that when you, if you've never done one before? Well, you get on YouTube and you look up Hobo with Wood and see what he's done. <laughs> That's one way. But when I'm not available or you should do this uh, regardless, even if you're using a different wood, especially if you're using different wood, don't try these settings we're going to talk about today because they're not going to work the same. But what my settings do for me on my laser and my shop and my conditions are not necessarily going to work for you because all those things matter. Humidity matters. How long the wood has acclimated to your particular environment from say when it was in storage at the, in the climate controlled uh, showroom. So there's tons of factors that come into play on how well of an image you produce when you're engraving. And the only way to really know what to expect from your laser is for you to test your laser on the materials you're using. So with that said, guess what I've been doing for most of the day today? That's right, testing. Lots and lots of testing. So I hope that this doesn't drown out my vocals, so I'm gonna speak a little louder, but the first burn I did today uh, was here, and it's the material test straight out of Blackburn. And it left some uh, some voids and some vacancy there with unburnt material because the speed was either too fast or the power wasn't high enough or a combination of the both. So I then changed it and went to uh, the, this one, which was uh, 10 by 100 on speed and power. And then that one still had some small voids here with unburnt uh, squares. And it's not showing up that great because the lighting in here is not that awesome. But there's actually a really decent variance in these burns. This is extremely deep and very black. And this is hardly anything at all. So I um, took what I learned from here and went to here and went from uh, from 30 to 70 in speed. Uh, 30 to 70 in speed, there we go, and from 30 to 100 in power. And that gave me a full palette. Everything's burnt. So now I can see what's capable from my laser uh, on a single pass uh, on this particular basswood. I took what I learned there and then started playing with my line intervals. And that's what these two tests are here. And this ultimately is what I ended up using to create the look I was uh, trying to create. And these are larger line interval tests here to, to help me get to the point to figure out that that's what I wanted. So now that you've seen what I've gone through to get to these settings, and this is what you should be doing on your own, let's jump in here to the project and see what I learned from my test and what we're gonna create today. Uh, all right, so as you know, I've already said, I'm, burning this on one of the larger, like 13 inch uh, basswood planks. And you've seen these, you've seen them in the hobby shops, little vintage trucks on them. They're usually red and everybody's all crazy about them right now. Well, that's what we're gonna do, but we don't want it to look like it came out of the hobby shop. We want something that's gonna be first class and you can see it and recognize immediately, well, this was custom and it wasn't done and, and by someone who didn't care about what they produced. So when I'm creating a sign like this, uh, a crafty little sign, and I'll, I don't want to put up there just, you know, welcome to the Arrowwoods, all one font, one, you know, two lines of text, and it looks like it came right out of a typewriter because that, that doesn't scream, you know, uh, craftsmanship, one of a kind, it, uh, you know, it's, Screams, hey, look, somebody put a piece of wood on the laser and got this. 
So I've got welcome and I curved the, the text and then I put to thee on its own font. Arrowwoods is only in another font and larger and italicized. So that looks a little bit more custom. Then on the truck, the truck is on three different paths. And why you ask? Well, let's look and see. From all the things I learned today with these tests, they vary in power, but they also vary in line interval. And it's going to give me a very unique look when it's all said and done. So the settings that I'm using, my first layer for the tires and for the wording, I've burnt at 30 millimeters a second and 90% power, single pass, uh, bidirectional fill, 2.5% overscanning. Because I've, I've, from my understanding on overscanning, the way it works is it's adding additional moves to that laser uh, to help reduce the opportunity for any burning at the end of your, your passage that when it stops to turn and come back. And basswood is very soft and it burns very quick. So I'm using the overscanning, hoping to eliminate any burns on the edge of my engravings. So recapping, 30 millimeters a second, 90% power, bidirectional feel, but a 2.5% overscanning, and on this, I'm using a 0.1 line interval, 0.1 millimeter line interval, or 254 lines per inch. Basswood, again, is so soft that you don't have to go into fine, fine detail when you're doing a larger uh, burn like the letters in, in the fonts we're using. Next was the, and we'll close it so we can see it, Next was the stake bed. If you uh, go to your cuts layers and select it and right click, you can see what's on that layer. So the only thing on that layer is the stake bed. And how is it different? Well, a lot of things are different. I'm doing 80 millimeters a second instead of 30. So it's moving quite a bit faster and 70% power. So it's a little less power and I'm using a bi-directional fill, but with the crosshatch. So that crosshatch is uh, demonstrated right here. When you go back here, you can see that's just bi-directional. And then here's bi-directional with the crosshatch. So the crosshatch is giving you the horizontal and then a vertical burn. So essentially it's two passes on that same layer. But here is the biggest difference. The line interval, I'm using half a millimeter, 0.5 millimeters line interval or 50.8 lines per inch is all that I'm using for that stake bed. Still one pass. And then lastly, the outline of the truck, 80 millimeters a second, 100% power, bi-directional fill, no, no cross hatch. But because these lines are so much smaller in some of the cases, I wanted to make sure that I've got as full of void as possible, giving that outline and that engrave. So I dropped it back down to a 0 0.08 or 317.5 lines per inch. All right, so now we go here and we look at the preview. You can see this is gonna take an hour for this burn. And even in this preview from a full screen like that, you can already see that difference in that line interval on that stake bed. And if we zoom in a little closer, now you can really see, you can see here, the truck body is done just on a single pass, but that's a 0.08 line interval or 317.5 lines per inch. Here was 0.5. So it seems a lot larger grid and it's bi-directional. So it's gonna give it a unique look. And then with the, the wordings, the fonts, you can see it's it's just a completely filled. There's no no nothing there at all. That's just going to be a large deep cavity, very dark, very black. Now, once this is done uh, with the one hour engraving, then to give it a really unique look and that that crafty look, I'm going to go back in and hand paint with the acrylic paints the truck body. Uh, leaving the engraving, you know, to stand out nice and proud. So each of these areas will be hand painted and that'll give it a really nice custom look. 
something you're not going to see by your at your neighbor's craft table uh, at the next craft show you go to. So uh, it's been burning while we're talking. I'm going to pause for a second, go grab it off the laser, show you what that looks like with the cross hatch and a finished, and then I'm going to pause for a second, come back and show you the finished hand painted project because that's what we can do with the internet. Isn't it great? finished product literally finished uh, still a little wet and that's why she's super glossy but <clears throat> got a nice clear finish on it that's gonna dry up look really super nice I'm very happy with that I really like the outcome of that steak bed I'm, I, I'm it's something silly something minor but I just think that looks so cool uh, and it's nothing but the engrave uh, with that really, really wide lines per inch. Little details like that are what really set you off from your next door neighbor who also has a laser. So thanks for watching guys. This has been Hobo. I got some pretty exciting news coming up, but I don't want to give it away just yet. Uh, but there's a clue. There's a hint. Coming soon. Yay. So if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell for notifications. I appreciate you watching. I really enjoy making these videos, and I hope we continue to grow. Let's get this channel. Spread the news. Spread it. Spread it to all your friends in the hobby world. Uh, let's make this thing explode before Halloween. I'm halfway to monetization, and that means I'm halfway to a haircut, and I need it bad. Hit that bell. Hit that notifications. Subscribe. This is Hobo. I'm out.